I have here the 37 sensor kit for Arduino uh, created by Alego. And what I wanted to do was go over some of the components with you. You can see there's a lot of different sensors. And the kit does come with a manual for how to hook them up as well as sample code. But I found that their code was a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. So I'm going to show you how to hook them up and some simple codes you can use. We're going to start today with the different LED sensors. Here are the different LED components we're going to be trying out today. We've got two different kinds of RGB, so red, green, blue LEDs. Then we've got just uh, yellow and red, two different versions, a large one and a small one. And then we have the seven color flash sensor. So one of the benefits you will see with the sensor kit is that the components have already been soldered onto their own little circuit boards, which means all you have to do is plug and play. Just plug in the pins to the correct pins of the Arduino. Starting with the RGB LED, we're going to go ahead and color code it. So you'll see it says RGB and then a little negative symbol. So R is going to be for red, G is for green, B is for blue, and then the negative is for ground. The manual does come with instructions on how to hook these components up. It doesn't always explain exactly how everything works, um, so I'll explain it to you as we go along. So we've gone ahead and plugged in all of the wires according to the sample code that came with the manual. And you can see in the sample code, the red pin is 11, green is 10, and blue is 9. Let's go ahead and upload the sample code. And what you will see is that the RGB will turn on at different values. So if you go like that, you can actually see that the red, green, and blue are all on right now. But as they turn on in different proportions, you get different color combinations. I find that their code's a little bit complicated, especially for beginners. So what I wrote in my sample code was a way to just test each of the red, green, and blue separately. So if we go ahead and upload our sample code, notice the red is on 11, pin 11, green is on 10, blue is on 9. And what I'm doing here is I'm making all three of them outputs, and I'm turning the red high and low, so turning the red on and off, then the green, then the blue. That way they flash separately and you can test out and make sure that each of the colors is working. When you're ready for something a little more advanced, what you can do is start combining the colors. So here you can see I have red and green high and low at the same time, which creates a sort of yellowish color. You can see it right there um, as it cycles through. So red, green, blue, then that combination, which looks kind of yellow, and then the combination of the blue and the red will create a sort of purplish color. If you combine all three, you should get white. But you can play around with it and try out a couple different color combinations. Then when you're really ready for something more advanced, then I suggest you use the random function. So the random function is really fun because instead of predetermining which colors you're going to get, the computer will randomly select the color values, so you get a lot more interesting shades that way. So to try out the random code, uh, we're still on the same pins. Red, green, blue are all still outputs, but what we do is we create these variables. So the red random is a random value between 0 and 255, then the same thing for the random value of green, and the same thing for the random value of blue. And then down here, notice I'm using analog write this time instead of digital write. So analog write will change the amount of that color. Instead of just being on and off, it'll be slightly on, a little bit more on. So with these random values, the closer to 255 you are, the brighter that color. And if it's zero, it's basically off. So if you get something like 120, it's right around the middle, it'll be middle level brightness. And if you combine those, you might have you know, a really bright red, really bright green but not that much blue, and then that will be a different color than if it was a lot of blue and not so much red. 
So let's go ahead and test this out and see what we get. Our delay is also much shorter here. We only have a 200 millisecond delay, so it's going to cycle through these colors much faster. So one thing you can do with these RGB LEDs is if you add some filter paper, you'll get much more diffused light and then you can really see what colors you're getting there much nicer. You can even build a little project like that. Okay, so now we're ready to switch over to just our yellow and red LED. So we're going to unplug this one. And we're not going to need all the same wires. The only ones you still need are the red and the black, which is uh, ground. So you can see already red is still flashing. And then we're going to switch out the green and the blue to just be yellow. So we went ahead and plugged in our red, yellow, and ground. And using that sample code that they put in the manual for you, Red is still on 11, yellow is now on 10, notice there's no green or blue anywhere. And what they have in their sample code is that the red and the yellow sort of fade in and fade out and switch colors. But again, that might be a little bit complex for someone who is not familiar with Arduino. So I just rewrote my test code over here. Um, it's basically the same thing we did before. Red and yellow are outputs. Red will be on, then the yellow will be on. And then finally, the red and yellow will be on together just to see what kind of orange we got. So let's run that code. You can see the red flashes, the yellow, and then sort of a combination orange. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell that it's orange, so we can try our filter paper. And then you can see that the red is much stronger than that combined orange color. So the red-yellow one isn't super exciting after you've done RGB. Um, but it's still useful for some applications. When you're ready, you can try it out with the smaller red and yellow component. It's basically just a smaller version, so you can unplug it and plug it back in exactly the same way with the yellow, the red, and the ground. This one actually, you can see the orange a little bit better than with the previous one. The seven color flash module is super easy to hook up because it's just ground, power, and then the signal. So even though it has different colors, you're not really in control of those colors. Uh, the only thing you can control is whether it's high or low, so whether it's on or off. So notice for the seven color flash, uh, the way you plug it in is you've got the ground and the power on the sides and then the signals in the middle. But basically, the color change has already been pre-programmed into it, so you're not in control of what colors it does. You can only control whether it's high or low. So they actually had a mistake in their sample code where they never um, let it turn off. But let's try this. And when the LED is high, it's going to flash in those different colors. But when the LED is low, it just turns off. So you can't control what colors it is, but you can control how long it is on and off. So you can see it's just blinking and sort of fading into different colors, but there's not really that much going on. So this definitely is not one of my favorite components. I much prefer having control over which of the colors are high or low. And that concludes the LED tutorial. So next time we'll take a look at some of the other components in the kit. But for now, have fun with your LEDs.